and welcome to your award-winning The Reasons I'm Broke podcast, bringing you the reasons we're broke every single week through news and headlines ranging from comics, movies, TV, video games, and more. I'm Daniel, and today we are going through sector number 459 as we continue the rotation of amazing co-hosts. We have Maceo returning, who I used to work with many years ago, has since maintained connection, became friends. He He's now a, a big part of the weekly podcast as well. Welcome back, Maceo. Thanks for having me. Broquette Core was good. In a couple of weeks, we are going to go through E3 as well. So far, it's planned with you and Bobby. And in, over the last couple of years, that, that had been kind of tradition, you know, going over E3. So we're going to continue that this year. And we'll get a double dose of Maceo within a month. Yeah, man. You know, uh, E3 is my, my favorite time of the year because I can do a lot of predictions. I can look at the <laughs> trash, call it out, see see what's good, what's garbage. Last time we had a good time talking about all the trash. We uh, And we got a lot of good games that came out of that E3. So I'm hoping a lot of good games since, you know, this is supposed to be the new gen, the, you know, PS5, Series X. We should be getting some new stuff, some good stuff. We should be hopefully seeing some fresher looks at some stuff we saw last year that didn't come out, like uh, Gotham Knights or hell, even um, some good looks at some new Sonic games. That's right, and that's the very first thing we're going to jump right into. Look at that beautiful transition, man. You set it right up <laughs> like a pro. <laughs> Kicking things off with Sonic Central 2021. People were just calling it the Sonic Direct. And we have the highlights of this direct basically and the first one here was a tease at a new mainline sonic game it is from sonic team set to come out next year any thoughts at all on this no info new sonic game uh before you even get into that just think back to when you were a kid dan did you ever think as a kid that you know 20 years later we would be like oh there's a, a sonic specific conference <laughs> that could last 30 minutes and tell you all the stuff about what's coming out with sonic usually it's just you, you get one game maybe you get a handheld game and that's it now they got cartoons movies like they could have announced and showed like a new piece of the new sonic movie that's coming out in a couple of years the sequel to the live action plus like four or five games like that's insane right it really is a, a an embarrassment of information, and it is its own little golden age because I remember when I used to help my dad out with the newspaper route, and the first time I found out about what even the Dreamcast was and that Sonic Adventure 1, I think is what came out on it, was on one of the newspapers when it was about to launch or a hit, it had just launched, and that was in that age of... During a, you'd look in the magazines, and maybe there you would see in Game Pro or Nintendo Power the latest video games, or you'd get a rumor from your friend at at school because they heard, saw it from this Japanese website because they had a computer and you didn't. And now, like you said, you can just stream for thirty minutes and you get all of the information right away. You can go on Twitter and you'll see everyone's thoughts. All of the videos, even if they don't make it available, someone will convert it and put it up everywhere. So it really is an awesome time for all gaming, all movies, just this age of information. Yeah, and it, to me, it's just incredible that in, in that, usually we have whole companies doing a conference where they announce multiple different types of games, genres, uh, IP. It, like Microsoft might go out, they'll say, oh, we have Halo, uh, maybe a Halo TV show or Halo movie. Then we have a racing game, a fighting game. And then Sonic is like, oh, we just have Sonic and we're just going to hit you over the head with Sonic. <laughs> and back when we were kids, we had to hear the guy talking about, oh, my, my uh, cousin's brother, uncle works at Sega and we're getting Sonic and Knuckles too. And it's like, <laughs> right. you just had to, you just had to be like, all right, cool. Sonic Knuckles too. Do I, do I believe this guy? I guess I do. That's my friend. I got to believe him. 
But um, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to be hype on this new Sonic, this new Sonic game. I mean, they didn't really show anything. They showed some Sonic running in 3D, no type of gameplay. So I don't know. Is it going to be a 3D Sonic? Are we doing like the Sonic Adventure type? Is it going to be a 2D Sonic with like 3D graphics? Is it going to be a a current gen title, like a PS5 and Xbox series title only? Or is it going to come out on everything? I believe they showed that it was coming out on everything. I want to say I saw PS4, PS5. So how is it going to leverage that new tech? It's kind of funky. I'm not a big fan of the uh, 3D Sonics. So I, I don't think if they show some gameplay at E3 or if they say how the sh- the game is going to be it'll depend on that for me wh- whether i'm going to be hype or if i'm just going to check it out when it comes out do you think we are going to get some more information in a few weeks during e3 or is, are we a little too early still since they only gave us literally no gameplay just a, a cg tease I, I would have to think that they're going to show some gameplay soon if the game's coming out in 2022 like that's only a year away so that means they Within a pandemic, if you're giving a hard date of 2022 and you're a year out, that means you have a lot of stuff already done. You're probably maybe not feature complete, but at least you know the the story is complete. Maybe the voice acting is done. So I got to assume you're going to see some gameplay within the next six months, maybe even a little small snippet at E3. But we're definitely going to get some news soon because nobody was even thinking about anything Sonic related in forms of a game this year at all. Like there was no rumors up until Sonic uh, team announced a game or announced a, any type of conference, a 30 minute direct. Nobody said anything about Sonic, anything coming out this year. So if that is the way they want to announce it by just showing a, a little movie, 30 second movie, and then say it's coming in 2022, I think we're seeing some gameplay very soon. One of the things that I was that we had discussed a couple of weeks back was how Sonic as a franchise has now spanned generations of players, of kids, and we've gotten to that age where even if this Sonic game, it, it ends up being a 3D platformer, people our age don't really like it, and maybe it's too simple for us, or it's not like Sonic Adventure. I was talking to Julian about it, and how he was saying that these games... You know, you can make a 2D game and it'll appeal to people our age uh, and you can make a 3D one and I think kids will be more into it or like the hardcore Sonic fans will just eat it all up. Like he was saying, he he said he'd be happy with any Sonic game, but I think they're kind of stuck in this weird spot where if it is a 3D Sonic, then it's it has a lot of its history that kind of comes with it where people are going to hold the bad games against it and not really the good ones. It's always really interesting when one of these comes out. And Sonic Boom, I think, was one of the last ones, I think, two <laughs> two titles ago. And people haven't forgotten about it. Yeah, like that game, it, it was an amalgamation of trash. You had trash voice acting. You had trash uh, graphics. The actual graphics were trash. The mm-hmm. art direction they went in was trash. So you they just balled up a whole bunch of garbage and then put it on a disc. and said you know sonic fans eat this up and they tried to support it i mean they they supported it by buying it because of sonic and they want sonic to continue to have games and not just be like a tv show or a cartoon or a comic but it wasn't good so it's it's difficult i don't think people uh, especially kids i don't think they're holding previous games unless you know they started off with boom then they're not holding previous games if you're nine years old and you didn't even play Boom, maybe the only thing Sonic you know is playing them on Smash Bros. Like, you don't care about what happened in the past. You just want a good game now. Mm. So, uh, from like, I know I enjoy the 2D Sonics, but I don't think a kid is like, they don't care if it's 2D, 3D. I mean, kids play Minecraft. That shit looks terrible. Mm. So, <laughs> it, 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 they play Roblox, and that shit looks terrible. It's, it's not so much about the graphics is just about the, is the game fun when they play it? Is it fun? And in my opinion, that it's very hard to make a 3d Sonic game where it feels fast. (laughs) 
So that's why I, I, I stick to the two play the two D versions. But even the three D, it could be dope. It, it depends on how they go about it. Unfortunately, we haven't seen anything, and so far the three D Sonics, besides the adventure games, they have been pretty bad. One of the titles that is pretty much beloved by the fan base, and people say it is a good game, I never got a chance to play it, is Sonic Colors. And they are releasing a remastered version. They're calling it Sonic Colors Ultimate. It's it's right around the corner. It's coming out on September 7th. This game first came out a decade ago, 2010, over a decade ago. And it might be, Scott and I were talking about it, and he said that other than graphics, he didn't really see what was remastered about it. They didn't really specify any new power-ups or any extra levels or different characters. And I think it's pretty much going to be kind of like what we've gotten with other remasters. Even Mass Effect, although that did give us all the DLC, but overall they just polished it and re-released it. And I think they're perfectly fine in doing the same with Sonic Colors because, again, this is going to be a whole new generation of fans that now have access to the game and they're going to be playing it. And all the players that, all the people that did grow up with Sonic Colors and they enjoyed that game, they're going to be more than happy to jump right back in. Yeah, this was uh, this is definitely a smart move. Um, there's plenty of people that have never played Colors. If you're, um, I would say, if you're anywhere from like five to eight. You probably never played it because by the time you started playing games, you might have started on the Xbox One. And this was a 360 title. So you might, a 360 or a PS3 title, and neither of those systems are backwards compatible. So if you started off with the Xbox One or the PS4, you never played this. You probably never played this. So you get to play a new Sonic game. It's brand new to you. And it's going to have all of that remastered refreshing it to this new system and on top of that hdr so if you got like a really good tv all the colors are going to pop like crazy so Mm -hmm. it's a smart idea i i I enjoy that i did i want to say i did play colors but man it's been so long (laughs) (laughs) getting old man i mean yeah i forget what what games i played sometimes but i want to say i did play colors on the 360 and I, i enjoyed it that was like the the only Sonic game in the past probably fifteen years. That and the um, there was like a two D Sonic, damn Sonic Mania. Yeah, Sonic Mania. That game there kicked my ass, yeah. man. Yeah, it, it was hard, but it's dope. <laughs> it's dope. It's just like the old games. And old that's games kind of what a little bit. they're bringing those back. Also, that another part of the announcement was Sonic Origins. It's a compilation. It's Sonic one through three. And Sonic CD, they did confirm that they also are putting in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, so that will be a part of it. And this was another one, no release date, but one in which I was talking again to Scott from Lazy Gaming Guys, one of the regular co-hosts on here, and he was saying that it's not even as good a compilation as the previous one that we had gotten on GameCube and uh, I think PS2, where it came with all of these and then some. And instead, it's like a lighter version of it all. And I, he, he also said that they've re-released these games so many times and it kind yes. of was like a non-announcement to him. But I don't know. I think it is another one of those where if they release this at the sa- around the same time as one of these newer games, even the remasters, it might be one that, again, kids might rediscover and might want to go back to. This one, I agree with Scott. Um, and this is one of those things where we can go rewind all the way back to what we talked about in my first e3 episode with dragon ball z like how many times are they gonna tell us about goku okay i'm gonna flip this back on sonic how many times are they gonna give us sonic one through three knuckles and sonic cd like we've been played this shit so many fucking times they've put it every every single fucking generation we get a compilation of sonics or sega does a whole like sega collection that comes with all Mm. of the fucking sonics including like the game gear sonic like they put all the fucking sonics on a single disc i had it on 360 they do like arcade releases where they will they'll do like like it's an indie game where you download only on the ps4 or the xbox where you can only get hey this is sonic one just sonic one for like three bucks you can i'm sure if you pull out your phone right now and you put sonic into google play or the app store sonic one two three like you can play this shit 
on a fucking toaster. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't understand it. I don't know. They need to give me the price point for this. If this shit is more than ten dollars, <laughs> like I, I love Sonic One, Two, Three, Knuckles, easily in my top ten favorite games of all time. But goddamn, like between that and Comic Zone, <laughs> they put that <laughs> shit on them damn compilations like so many fucking times. It's insane, man. Like they gotta stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this <laughs> generation's stop. compilation, you know. <laughs> and. And on top of that, if you have a computer, they have like a whole uh, like Sega arcade where you can literally buy whatever fucking Sega game, like any fucking Sega Genesis game. You can buy it for like two dollars a piece. Like, I think you buy like a whole set for like 10. But then like they have other games that you can buy for like a dollar here, two dollars there, whatever. Like at this point, they devalued Sonic mm. 1, 2, 3 and Knuckles by the amount of compilations they put it in, putting this shit out by itself just one two three knuckles and cd like you, you can't it, you almost have to only charge ten dollars or less if you charge any more than that people would be like it, these games are like basic imagine if nintendo just said hey here's the the super nintendo collection where they had one two three and world on it Imagine if they just put that out and was like, oh, that's 30 bucks. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I wouldn't put it past Nintendo, though. <laughs> they would yeah, pull something yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, you, how many times are you going to re release some shit? Like, that, that's been on so many collections. I, I think I can, like, go in my closet and pull out a collection that has Sonic 1, 2, 3 and Knuckles on that shit just on a random disc. But hey, uh, if, if, it, if it makes them money, I'm all for it. The last one that we have from this Sonic Direct is the uh, <laughs> leaked Sonic Prime announcement. <laughs> I, I think it was the official Sega account that had accidentally tweeted it, and then they took the tweet down, but even like Treasure Hunting Sonic had already screenshotted it, and everyone knew about it. And they officially confirmed that it's Sonic Prime on Netflix. It's going to be a 24-episode series set to premiere next year, and it's being produced by Man of Action, who previously did Ben 10, and if it's, if it's anything like, look, we talked about Sonic Boom and how terrible the game was, but the good thing that came out of that was the best Sonic cartoon of all time, which is the Sonic Boom television series. And if this is, I'm going to compare it to that when Sonic Prime comes out, because I like Netflix. They have a good track record on, on whatever originals that they put out, even if they didn't pr produce it themselves. But this is going to, it's primed up to be a hit. A lot of kids have easy access to netflix this is how they're going back to naruto they're watching that for the first time avatar I, I see it with my manga section kids are coming in and buying those books as if it's brand new you have an audience already installed for this i think sonic prime is going probably going to be a hit and we'll get a second season out of it so and this is this is going to be my question what happened to sonic boom yeah i think it kind of ran its course because it went well over the the game's lifespan because the game came and went people kind of dropped it but the show kept going because people knew it was good and i guess the writers were like all right but i'm guessing at one point at some point sega has to go all right we need to move away from those character designs because we're moving into this direction now and and i think it's a branding issue i think that's probably what happened and I, i'm sure the ratings weren't the strongest by the time they got to year four or five okay so basically yeah i guess that makes sense if they don't want the brand to be associated with those character designs because the majority of the fan base don't like the designs even if the cartoon is cool mm -hmm. then you don't want to have that show continue to go on and then the movie comes out and nothing looks like that or a game comes out and nothing looks like that so i guess it makes sense with this sonic prime i'm cool uh netflix 24 episodes is a lot almost <laughs> nothing comes out straight out and is this going to be straight out the gate just they're going to drop 24 episodes like they normally do because most netflix shows are like 12 episodes or less so i think cool. so but i'm guessing it'd probably be 15 minute episodes uh, if it's yeah, going to be 24 yeah. that's cool man like it, it's going to give kids something new and parents they they know what sonic is so they're going to put that on Yep, and it'll be another thing that Treasure Hunting Sonic, who's on our Discord, he's been on the show before, another line of merch that he can try to collect now, because you know they're going to have original designs just for Sonic Prime, <laughs> and he'll have to get the t-shirts and the figurines and uh, Funko Pops if it ends up being that big. 
It's just more. It's amazing to me how Sonic as y- y- yes, it's huge, but it almost seems like the ratio of merchandise almost shouldn't match what, how big it is. Yet it is <laughs> like people will buy the merch. I've never seen a fan base so dedicated to collecting that stuff. It's amazing to me. Yeah, the, that that's easily one of the most like valuable ips it doesn't matter that the games don't maybe the games don't bang as as hard as they should you put something out sonic and people are just gonna go watch it they're gonna buy it you put a you put a sonic a cool sonic design on a t-shirt yeah i'm a, i haven't played sonic in years but this t-shirt looks kind of cool and people buy mm-hmm. it funko pop you might not care about Sonic, but then you see the funk up on like, oh man, just Sonic is just a cool looking character. <laughs> yeah. Just a cool looking character. So you just want to gravitate to him. Even if the the media might not be hitting as hard as it does or as it should. But the the people support it like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I think not, that's, it's yeah. not it's it's not like Pokemon huge where like you put Pokemon on something and it, it just instantly sells out, but it's, it's still valuable for sure. And moving on over to, so on the TV side, we're talking about merchandising and residual pays a little bit. Uh, that's what we're going into with bleeding cool. They had an interview with spawn creator and venom co-creator Todd McFarlane. He revealed that he's getting twice more residual pay from Warner Brothers TV for Stargirls' Artemis character than he's getting from Marvel for Venom. This, to me, was not a big surprise. He compared how he and Image Comics, which he is, I think, a co-owner, if not a full owner at this point, with the couple of people that are still left that founded the company... But when it comes to characters that are created by the artist or writers, he said, quote, I'm going to create a system where if you create a Venom for me, then you will reap the benefits way, way bigger than you would working for the other companies because I don't have giant overheads. I don't have to pay to make my stock profit, end quote. And this was similar to Jim Starlin a couple years ago. He was talking about how he made way more money. This was on on, uh, Word Balloon from KG Beast's character in Batman vs. Superman, a pretty big role, but not the main villain at all of that movie. He made more money off of that than all of the movies that Thanos was featured in. He also said that all of the Guardians of the Galaxy characters combined and Thanos were still less pay than he got for KG Beast on Batman vs. Superman. Uh, so that that just amazed me still where... I don't know what kind of pay grade they have set up with Disney or Marvel, but it's this, not good. This is getting in, out of control. And it, wasn't there a third story about, um, man, I can't remember the guy's name or the character, but it was like he, it was like a dog or some type of like side, small side character that was in a DC film. And I'm then trying to think. Oh man, it was like some type of animal or dog or pet or something like that that appeared in the in the in a one of the DC movies. Damn, I can't and they remember got paid what. like they got a lot yeah, of pay. Yeah, they for got that? paid more than they did doing like I think the guy made like Hawkeye or something. Hmm. I can't remember the story, but I remember you talking about it on on the podcast. It's insane that these small little side characters people that don't pop up very often um uh, is art like what is i don't even know what star girl is let's let well, i'm gonna start there <laughs> as a person that's not even huge i'm not huge into comic books at all i don't know what star girl is i know what thanos is mm-hmm. and he was a main character of like three but two movies and like a background character and like another like one or two and this man is getting paid more from a TV show, I'm assuming the Star Girl is this is this HBO is this CW. So it was originally DC Universe, and then when that went away, they made it into a CW release, and they also put it out on HBO Max. So it's a CW okay. show at this point. And does Artemis is that like a main character? Does he pop up all the time? I guess uh, she's just a side character, oh, <laughs> not even. Side, oh, so it's not, <laughs> it's not even Star Girl herself. Wow! Wow! And, and Todd said that 
he didn't even know that he received residuals for Artemis until he started getting a paycheck in the mail. And he's like, oh, I guess I do get residuals from that character. He didn't even remember that contract. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's beautiful, though. Getting something in the mail, you don't even know it's coming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> getting some money in the mail, you don't even know it's coming. Like, that's, that's great. But Warner is probably, honestly, I want to say Warner is seeing this shit and they're probably just if they're probably just gonna say shit. We need to pay like Marvel. Like we're we're leaving money on the table, giving our creators more money than the big guy is the one that's making two, three hundred million, four hundred billion dollar movies, and guys are getting paid like pennies on the dollar when we're using their main characters. And I guess with Venom, is that that's Sony. So what's Sony doing? And and that that's kind of the weird thing is he also gets some paychecks for the Venom movies or does he does it all go straight to the comics only? There's a lot of questions on my end on how they worked out that contract with Marvel. I'm assuming to be able to use that character in Venom Two or Venom Three or whatever. But even then, he's still a mainstream character in the books. It's one of their best selling mm-hmm. titles thanks to Donny Cates's writing. I, I don't know. I don't know how that contract really works. But he's getting way more for Artemis than he is for Venom. And Venom has way more merch, way more comics, movies, a much bigger character and somehow. But I think you're right. Yeah, AT&T, Discovery, they're probably going to be looking at the contracts of some of these newer characters and probably bringing down that percentage or changing how that contract works. Because especially if the artists and writers don't realize like, oh, shit, I'm getting a paycheck for that character, then they're not keeping an eye on it. Yeah, yeah. This is not gonna be good for these future, these future creators. Like, if they're not with a Image Comics or a Boom or any of these indies, and they're signing with uh, Marvel, they're signing with DC. I can't imagine they're giving them the, the same splits that these guys got originally, because like they again, they just anytime they pop up, you're getting a check. I don't think they're they are going to fall for that. Hopefully the contracts do stay the same for some of the creators. I don't know. I, I'd like to see what uh, Greg Capullo and Scott Snyder got for the Batman who laughs. Cause that's one of the newer biggest characters that we've seen in modern comics, but something that is right now still as of when we recorded the, they're calling it the number one movie in the world. Netflix TV revealed that over 72 million views have hit army of the dead. They're calling it, again, the number one movie in the world. It's projected to be one of Netflix's most popular films ever in that first four-week window. So four-week premiere is what they're looking at. And this is where a lot of the detractors started to ask questions like, okay, but what really counts as a view? And is it only if they watch for at oh, least two God. minutes? And <laughs> and it's like, okay, are we, are we holding that same metric for the other movies then in Netflix's top 10? Like just all of these mental gymnastics they were trying to make to make this, to diminish the success of this. And overall... We were just comparing the fandom, you know, Zack Snyder's fandom. We were comparing how Netflix is celebrating and doing a victory lap over the hit that is Army of the Dead and comparing it to how Warner Brothers and AT&T would sit on the Snyder Cut numbers, which are clearly huge because if they weren't, they would have revealed them. And they don't want to because they know that that's going to put another fire under our ass to say, look, you got a hit here. Why won't you do a sequel? This makes no sense. But Netflix is more than happy to show the streaming numbers, talk about the prequels, talk about how Zach has hinted that he's got signed on for two more movies after Army of the Dead. Mm-hmm. And just showing, they're showing the, the other streaming services, specifically HBO Max. This is how you celebrate a fucking release. This is how you capitalize on that spike of everyone's talking about this movie. So you, you know, add gasoline to it. You, you keep that conversation going. You convert people that are on the fence of, I don't know, maybe I'm not really into zombie movies. Oh, but everyone's really liking and talking about this. Maybe I will check it out. Yeah. I I watched it. Um, I was planning on watching it. And then I literally got home from work on Friday and my wife was like, oh, hey, um, you want to watch a movie? I found this movie on Netflix. And I was like, oh, okay, what movie did you find? So then she pops the Netflix on. 
And she's like, oh, it's this movie right here, Army of, of the Dead. And I was like, you found the number one movie on Netflix? <laughs> like, you said, <laughs> like, she was saying it like it was like some, like she had to dig deep through the Netflix <laughs> archive. I was like, it, it's the number one movie on Netflix right now. Like, it literally has the top 10 badge on it. <laughs> but, um, it's something, something's definitely stinky over there on eight on the HBO, AT&T, Discovery, Warner, whatever the fuck they want to call themselves now. Something's really stinky over there because if you think back when Wonder Woman came out, they told us all the numbers. Yep. When, uh, what, damn, what was the movie? Godzilla with, vs. Uh, Kong and Mortal Kombat yeah, too. Kanza, Mortal Kombat, uh, the, Den- the Denzel and um, Jared Leto movie. Yeah. Um, uh, on, what was telling, it called? Yeah, on the other side or something. They they told us everything that was going on with those movies. How many people were watching the Friends reunion? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they couldn't shut the fuck up about telling us what was going on with that stupid ass shit. <laughs> but when it got down to the Justice League uh, the Snyder cut, crickets. Radio <laughs> silence. Yeah, they basically just said, "Hey, it's out." Oh, by the way, you can watch it if you're trying to watch Tom and Jerry. But Netflix boasting about it. They, I seen commercials telling me it was the number one in the world. I'm just trying to watch a YouTube video. Hey, Army of Dead is number one in the world. Go watch it. Yeah, I watched it. It was pretty good. Uh, I have some gripes with it, but overall it was good. And if they let Zach continue on, put out some more, uh, some more Army of the Dead or of something in that universe. I'd definitely sign back up to watch it. I don't see why they wouldn't boast about it. If you got 72 million views and the, the idiots online really talking about, if you put it on for two minutes, they're not counting the two minute and then you back out and you go to watch the office. They're not counting that as a fucking view (laughs) because I'm sure Zach gets some kind of bonus or some type of extra money, the actors in the movie get some type of bonus or extra money when it comes to views. So they're not they're gonna try to lower the amount of views, if anything. They'll they'll probably do something like if you watch less than an hour of the movie, it's not a view, just mm-hmm. so that they could pay less on their on the back end. So the the fact that it was one of their most popular films, and I'm trying to think back to like what movies i've watched on netflix like i know i watched that shit with um anthony mackie that shit was terrible <laughs> you know, he was like he was like the android robot thing the other one was like um like chris hemsworth or liam hemsworth whichever one of them it was <laughs> it was like extraction i think was the name of it that shit was terrible i think so, that was one uh, of their most popular movies yeah and that was one of, and I, <laughs> and I fell for it too because I, I saw the top <laughs> 10 badge i was like oh all right, it's got looks like it has some action in it. I'll watch it, and that shit was terrible. Um, so they they put out some stinkers when it comes mm-hmm. to the movies. So I'm not really that surprised that this is one of their best streaming movies. Um, they need to get more movies like this, especially on the action tip. They need they definitely need to get more movies closer to this that have uh, action in a nice concise package, not too long doesn't drag on so i i'm i'm definitely down for to see what they're gonna do next but um how, how how about you how did you enjoy it i really did enjoy it and i'm working on i keep having to restart it because i'll, I'll go for my second viewing and then kelly will fall asleep so i'm like okay let me pause it now I'll, I'll finish the, finish it tomorrow but then uh, yeah i saw it we saw it in theaters and that was great and i had that kind of it took me out of the movie where that that new lens that he was using that he said in the behind the scenes thing he bought off ebay and it was this old lens from like the 60s or whatever and and he used it for this movie Uh, when you see it on the big screen it's way more noticeable like it took me out of like okay i see this is way different than anything he's done before that i've seen in a movie watching it on my hd tv i don't notice that as much i don't know if it looks cleaner or whatever but it didn't take me out of it this time of like, okay, now I'm seeing what kind of lens focus he's using here or there. I was just more or less just watching it 
for the film itself, the plot and everything. And yeah, I did have some issues with it too. And Kelly and I will talk about it next week. Uh, plot wise was, was the biggest thing for us and little things Same. that they could have, they could have changed here or there. But overall, I think it's a, ve- a very exciting universe that he's building here. He left enough in there to expand on, okay, there's aliens, there's cyborgs, but the main thing in this one is zombies, but he hit, hinted at origins of what this mutant virus was or is, or it, it's an alien thing. I don't know, but he's going to answer those in the prequels. And it's enough to get us all talking about it to the point where Netflix put out an official video of fan theories about the movie. Like they're supporting this thing like crazy in a way that other studios don't for their properties. And I don't know if they have the luxury of the fact that they're a streaming service and they can just have play around with these ideas but they're truly there to look if the fans are running wild with theories. Okay. Let's make a video on that and put it out within 24 hours and don't just do it. And I, it's just this operation that they have that I admire. Like, you know, we can talk about the quality of their actual projects and it goes up and down, but when it comes to actually supporting their thing, no matter how good or bad it is, they're on it. Yeah. That's, that's the best part of that. Like them posting that video, like, Oh, here's the fan theories. Like, that shit only happens for like the biggest TV shows and movies like Game of Thrones, Walking Dead, like shit that makes people talk about it and want to converse and say, oh, this, I saw the, you saw, you see the metal when you shot it. That's, that wasn't just a regular zombie, like all that kind of stuff. That is them, them supporting the movie like that is very dope. Like you hardly ever get that. Think about like, when you watch, I don't know, like Mission Impossible or some shit, like you watch the movie and then that's it. Mm-hmm. There's no discussion behind it. There's no, oh, I think this guy's going to come for the next one. Like that's just the movie is done. And this is the, this type of fanfare and backing of the company saying, hey, maybe it was this. Maybe it was that. Well, like we'll we'll post your theories and make it another million hit view on YouTube. Like that's dope. Zach had to come out to, on Vero and Twitter and thank Netflix for putting up that graphic of 72 million. And we're just looking at this like he shouldn't have to, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things that That's every true. company should be doing. And and it's an, yet another missed opportunity that we're looking at from AT&T or Discovery that they could have easily done build up their channels on YouTube or Facebook or wherever by putting up these graphics about how great this movie did. They HBO Max just put up this quarterly performance thing of here every month, here's our subscriptions numbers, and here's the graph. Here's all the movies that are responsible for that. And even then they're trying to not to diminish the fact that the Snyder Cut coming out in March gave them a shit ton of subscriptions. And they're like, well, but it could have also been because of Mortal Kombat. And it also could have been because of Godzilla <laughs> vs. Kong. And it's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> what are you guys doing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, Conveniently. Conveniently of course. is those things. And of course. It, it's hilarious because, how uh, you said, exactly. Uh, Netflix, they're boasting about the numbers. And it shouldn't be like, oh, man, thank you. because. For example, if you stream, if if your favorite artist puts out a, a album, they're gonna get the hey, we stream like Spotify gonna be like, oh, this got mm-hmm. streamed a hundred million times. If something got streamed on Spotify, Apple Music, whatever, the week it came out and it hit seventy two million streams, they're telling you about it, and that's a song that's five minutes long. And we're talking about a two hour, a two hour movie. With 72 million views, that's big. It doesn't matter that it wasn't 72 million tickets sold. Who cares? 72 million people on Netflix clicked to watch that. How many fucking things come out on Netflix that don't get 7 million views? Right. Exactly, yeah. So (laughs) 72 million, you can't scoff at that. There's nothing you could say. You could could say whatever you want about the movie. You could say the movie's bad if you didn't like it or Mm -hmm. what have you. But when it comes to the success, is 100% a success. And I can't wait till they put out the graphic that says 100 million views. Right. Give it like a couple more weeks. Yeah, it's coming. And this is, again, a project that Warner Brothers passed on. They sold it 
to to Netflix because <laughs> they the the rumor is that Toby mm. didn't want to work with Zach at all, like at Warner Brothers. So this project that he was attached to, they sold it to Netflix, and Netflix was like, "What? They're crazy about his idea." They're like, "You got plans for three movies? Let's do it here. Here's ninety million. Go do it. There's no restrictions. Have fun. Just have it done by this time." <laughs> yeah. He- you can't beat that, man. And that's another L. <laughs> so they got the the Army of the Dead L, and then they got the Joker L. When they, right. oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> they just losing money and they leaving money on the table. It's amazing to me. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. And uh, I, I wish I, I don't know if I talked about it on here, but some of us that, and it's only I think thirty dollars a share to buy into AT&T, but when they were doing their quarterly earnings, we were trying to all get a seat into that call. Like, Hey, let's try to <laughs> like, how many shares do we have to own to get in there? <laughs> like, yeah, the the and, Snyder cut conglomerate. <laughs> yeah, it's like, can we all pull our, our shares together to get one seat in there <laughs> into the call? That'd be crazy. Yeah. That would be crazy. Yo. If y'all really did like start up like a, just a LLC, just to have <laughs> All you guys just put your share. Oh, everybody in, in this company, we put all our shares, and now we have one uh, percent of <laughs> HBO, <Right. laughs> AT and T, or whatever. And so now we can get into the investor calls. Like and that, that would be crazy. They would be so mad. <laughs> and, and that's what Manu was saying when he was on. And he's like, but it's that ridiculous. Like, do we have to do that? He's like, we shouldn't have yeah. to, to tell them, here's how much money we're willing to give you. It's, yeah, I've never seen a, a company so blind and it's, it just makes them look worse when someone like Netflix does this. And, and, uh, it, it just shows again that the people that are a fan of his movies are there for all of them, not just for the DC ones. So it's just something to celebrate and something that we will continue to talk about here on the show as the prequels release as well. And when once that hits, as Maceo said, that 100 million view milestone within the next couple of weeks. But let's talk about that streaming service, HBO Max. Uh, it is still my favorite streaming service. We have the highlights for what's coming in June 2021. <laughs> And the first one on this list is Dr. Sleep. It is the director's cut, sort of sequel to The Shining. Is that one that you were able to catch? Or are you a fan at all of The Shining? I I don't think I've seen The Shining. It, it's one of those movies, it came out so long ago that I possibly have seen it. When it comes to my memory and movies, if that shit isn't like my favorite movie of all time or anywhere up there, I almost don't remember watching it. So um, I might have watched The Shining, but I haven't watched Doctor Sleep, and I'll probably check it out on HBO. You know, just an- another movie to watch. I haven't seen it either, but it does star Ewan McGregor, and I I do like The Shining a lot. And I think they revisit that old Stanley Kubrick uh, mansion. You know, the one that he featured in his movie, and I believe the movie his movie is different than the book, but it's it's one of the most probably the top 10 horror films of all time in a lot of people's lists. So they had to do something more with that property that they own. I think they've done a TV show before, just like they did with it. And with Dr. Sleep, I don't think it did too well, but it was right on that border of like the COVID COVID was happening and a lot of movies suffered during that period. So uh, I'm excited to check it out. And I'm curious if the director's cut is uh, there along with the theatrical or how they're releasing it. But uh, we'll see. It's, uh, it's coming up real quick. But another one that is a Kubrick movie is Eyes Wide Shut. It's the f- last one he did. I think he passed away before the movie premiered, starring, you were just talking about Mission Impossible, uh, starring Tom yeah, Cruise. Tom Cruise. Uh, came out in the 90s, I think. I, I watched this as a kid, <laughs> you know, as a teenager. Same. same. <laughs> and, yeah, I uh, do not remember it. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I remember Tom Cruise is in it, but that's pretty much it. And he comes across a sex cult and, and, then, yeah. and then it talks about guilt and, and how he kind of has to come clean at the end. It's a really bizarre movie, but it, it still fascinates me watching it. It's kind of weird that it's his la- it was his last one. And I think he had, there's rumors that he, before he passed away, he wanted to re-edit the whole thing and he wasn't happy with it. And he, and some people are saying that's bullshit wow. that he was happy with. I don't know, but it, it's one of those weird things where one of the greatest directors of all time, uh, this, it, it, this was his last one and Tom Cruise nails it. Uh, who else was 
I think he was married to the co-star Nicole Kidman. Yeah, she was in that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about The Shining, which was written by Stephen King. Another one written by Stephen is The Green Mile. Came out in the 90s as well. And I think it was one of those Oscar bait ones. Uh, one I also saw quite a number of times. It was always on TV, especially during Oscar season. Yeah. Uh, is this one you checked out too? I watched that shit on TV. The whole, it, I think it takes like four hours to, yeah. <laughs> when you're watching it on TV. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They had so many commercials. Honestly, I, 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 would, I, I would need to watch that shit again. Because as a kid, that movie is fucking boring. Like <laughs> as a, as a like 12, 13 year old, you just put it like you just see some big ass black dude on TV. And you're like, oh, shit, I want to watch that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I watched it and and you just watch it. Like, I guess it's not that boring if I sat through and watched the movie from start to finish. Yeah, it's like there's no action in it. Like as a kid, you know, there's not people getting like shot and killed or knocked out. Like, you're not. It's kind of boring. Mm hmm. But um, I would need to watch it again to to you know know what exactly how well it is. I know it's uh, shot very well. Right. Yeah, that's what I want to watch it for. The because it, it's been years since I've seen the Green Mile, and I remember it being reflecting on it now, being like the tropiest thing of like, okay, there's the the one evil warden, and he's bad, and we're gonna hate him, but he's gonna get his, and and there's mm -hmm. the side character that that he's a little slow, but. But he he relates to to the innocent. Uh, who who was he? He he played Kingpin in Daredevil, but he's basically like the uh, co-star next God, to Tom Cruise. I yeah, I can't remember his uh, name at all, man. Uh, yeah, uh, and he passed away a couple of years back. Like Michael. Oh Michael. yeah yeah yeah. Um, Clark, Michael Clark Duncan, right? I think that, yeah. that sounds yeah. right. Yeah, that sounds about right. And and I think he got nominated for an Oscar on this one or one. I can't remember, but I'd have to go back and really watch it for the for the camera work and the the cinematography and all that because I remember the plot being pretty simple for being so long, you know, three over three hours. And this series of films are back on HBO Max. They had been off for a couple of months. Scott had told me what streaming service they went on, but now they're back. All seven or I guess eight Harry Potter films are on HBO Max. I have not watched a single Harry Potter, Star Wars, or Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Holy shit. So, <laughs> and I'm, I have you seen the Rocky movies? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, one and two. I, I was going to say, you, you should have kept it going. Two, like, I haven't seen the Rocky other movies. <laughs> <laughs> There's some other shit I haven't seen. Star, Star Trek. Trek. Wow. Yeah, I haven't seen that. Um, I'm trying to think of movies that have like a lot of, like a long series to them. It's funny. I've, I've read The Hobbit, but I haven't watched the movies. Those books are fucking... I tried reading The Hobbit, and I couldn't stand it. Yeah. I love The Hobbit. It was good. I, I, but I didn't continue on like reading Lord of the Rings. I just stopped at The Hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I didn't have any affinity for Harry Potter, because I tried to read, uh, I think, the first book. Is, is it the... Uh, Azkaban one? Is that the first book? That's the third one. The, the, the third book. Okay. first was um, Sorcerer's Stone. Oh, okay. Yeah, I tried to read the the Prisoner of Azkaban, mm -hmm. and I wasn't fucking with it. So then I just never cared about the movies, and I never checked them out. So I, I don't feel any kind of way about this being on. I tried to watch. I think I watched like twenty minutes of uh, Fantastic Beast. Oh I yeah, like that shit. <laughs> I didn't like that shit either. So yeah, uh, it's... my wife might my wife might be hyped. I think she watched every single one of these. Yeah, it's one of those movie series that you know, Kelly and I rewatched them like a month or two back all eight of them and they were all on hbo max it's it's a funny series i don't know if you'll you'll ever if you're planning on watching them all but as you progress from the first movie and i grew up with the movies and the books they progressively age up with the audience so you you watch the first two movies and it, they are clearly made for kids and you got magic and but you, but it's filled with these amazing actors for that period and even now you got Alan Rickman as this side character and that's it. And it's like, man, they spent that money on Alan Rickman. And then by the end of the, the series, he becomes like a huge deal in the books and in the movies too. So it kind of pays off in the end. And you know, JK, it didn't have any of that plan. It just worked out. But as the movies continue from three forward, they just get dark and not in a bad way because dark doesn't mean good or bad, but they just get more heavy in the themes. There's a lot more death. 
and the their the content itself it gets bloodier and and they kind of almost push that R rating by the seven and parts one and two for for the seventh movie. Yeah. So it's just kind of interesting how if if I were just you know twenty years from now or fifty years from now if you're just watching the whole series all eight movies it kind of takes this churn all of a sudden in, in movie three of, holy shit, what the hell happened? I thought this was this like magical <laughs> kids movie. What's it turning into now? <laughs> and and I guess you watching that shit with the, with your kid. And then all of yeah. a sudden that shit just turns <laughs> for the worst. Right. God, damn. It's, it's, it's not a series that you can do that with. You, you kind of have to wait till they're old enough. And then it's like, okay, now let's watch all eight movies. Cause uh, you're not going to have them just watch one and two and wait 10 years <laughs> until they grow yeah. up a little bit. <laughs> Uh, rest in peace, Alan Rickman. By the way, yeah, yeah, that's what that was one that I was I was so sad here in Orlando. They had the flower set up at the Universal ride outside his office in the in the Harry Potter land, like in Potter. Snape's yeah. office. They did all this this whole thing, and uh, yeah, I was really sad that day. I was at work, and and my manager at the time, he was a big Alan Rickman fan too, and and Snape, and he was he was really bummed out. So it was I remember that day very clearly. Well, a tremendous talent, though, and probably one of the best parts of those movies. It's just his few couple of minutes here and there, and he just nails it, of course, because he knows what he's doing. And another one on this list is one that I watched a lot as, again, a teenager, was Matchstick Men, starring Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Nick Cage. Yeah. This and- is one of those uh, Nick Cage movies I didn't see. I saw Face Off. Uh, the National Treasure Hunt. What is it? Da Vinci yeah, Code, National Treasure. It, da Vinci is, Code is was uh, Tom uh, Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Okay. Damn. What's some other ones? Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. Uh, yeah, Ghost, Ghost Rider One and Two. Yeah, Ghost City Rider. of Angels. Yeah. yeah, I never watched a match, dude. Man, who else is in it besides Nick Cage? So it's got. Uh, he plays the teen. We we're just talking about him, and in, in the TMNT retrospective review, but he plays the teen in that. Uh, He's the only other big actor. I have to look him up now. Uh, it's it's mainly those two, and he plays like a, a Nick Cage plays this character that has massive OCD, but he's also a, a con artist, and it all kind of comes back at him when this daughter that he didn't know he has comes back into his life, and she's like, "Yeah, you're my dad," and and uh, mom wanted me to come live with you and felt that I should get to know you. And he's like, no, I, I can't do that. I'm in the middle of this giant con. And that's kind of where he's he's he gets her involved and she's a teenager in his latest con and he doesn't want to do it anymore or something. Sam Rockwell, he's the other star in it. Uh, oh, he was in, uh, wasn't he in Green Mile? I, I don't know. He might have been. He might have been, but... He's the, yeah, he's the other side of this and, and I enjoyed it a lot and I, I want to go back and watch it, but it kind of has this twist towards the end and, uh, it's got a, it's very well filmed and one of, I would say one of Nicolas Cage's better, like actual movies, not just like he's crazy in this and that's why it's awesome. It's directed by Ridley Scott. Of course that makes sense. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. So I, I'm okay, going to go back I'm and re- revisit that one. I might watch that. Uh, I, I like Nick Cage movies, man. Even if he even if he plays himself half the time, I still fuck with his movies. Usually they're entertaining. They might not be good movies, but they're right. entertaining. Yeah. I just bought this $5 DVD collection. I was at target with Scott and it was the Nick cage collection. And it had a, <laughs> I was like for five bucks, I haven't seen any of these. They look terrible, but fuck it. I'm going to watch them. They're they've got a uh, Nick cage in them. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately I got what I paid for, not even in the movie quality, but in the DVD quality, because it doesn't have any closed captions. The audio is terrible. Like, I don't know if they, if the movie itself wasn't mixed well or whatever, but I just, I can't really hear the dialogue in, in the first movie I watched, which I think is called Joe. And, and I'm like, all right, well, you know, I got my $2 worth out of that one. And once I get to the last ones, it'll be fine. But it's one of those movies that you just put on. And I think it just starts playing the first movie of the four <laughs> like there's no yeah, me- like no real menu, menu to this thing and, and, and so no... they put all of them on one disc yeah it's all in one disc one dvd i don't know how they did it and and i don't know if it's the picture quality uh, it's a dvd quality but i don't know if it's that it looks like a dvd or they really lowered the quality to fit all four on there and compress the movies and that's why it didn't doesn't have any of that in it so which, uh, which movies are on there i know you said joe yeah, it's got it's it drive fast is another one that's on there. Yeah, I think I've seen that. Where it's like uh, a post-apocalyptic something rather, 
but and then it's got also joe was the latest one it's it's like one that just came out over the last five years or so uh mm-hmm. the last two movies i i it was here it is uh knowing the knowing is it's actually got six movies i'm sorry i'm looking at it right now <laughs> it's, it's called drive angry not drive fast drive angry, drive angry. the knowing Lord of War, Bangkok Dangerous, and I've Deadfall. Seen Bangkok Dangerous. <laughs> Deadfall. Damn, I don't think I've seen that. So six movies for for five bucks. Can't beat it. And I think Lord of War, I th- I feel like I heard that was actually pretty decent. So Yeah. yeah you know, looks like you're in for a wild ride. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> The uh, last one on this HBO Max list is Tim Burton's Corpse Bride. I put it on there because it came out at the height of that Nightmare Before Christmas Hot Topic merchandise craze where for whatever reason, I don't know if kids that grew up with that suddenly got to that age where they were buying merch, they had jobs, and Nightmare Before Christmas took off. It was one of those properties that Hot Topic, I guess, they're like, yeah, we'll we'll see what we can do with this. And they came out with it, did well. It's so much so that Tim Burton got to direct this stop motion film. He didn't direct Nightmare Before Christmas. He directed Corpse Bride, though. And uh, it fell short, but it kind of had some interesting ideas and some cool designs. Uh, Were you ever a Tim Burton guy? I've watched Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, I did not know it had all this fanfare. I was friends with some goth kids in school, and they always talked about where they had the, I guess it was in that hot topic time and they had nightmare before Christmas, everything. So I figured they were big fans and <laughs> it, it showed on TV. And I was like, I don't, I was trying to understand why it had so much fanfare. It was a good movie, but to buy merch and stuff behind it, I, I didn't really get it. So it, I guess just it being black and white was enough for goth kids to like just buy everything Tim Burton, like it just looks kind of cool. Uh, I like the character designs; they, those look really dope. So I, I kind of guess that's why people gravitate to it. I don't know that mm. they gravitate to it because like the characters are on it or the music, maybe I don't know. Yeah, I think um, a lot of it does have to do with that character design. Absolutely, they're just iconic at this point. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's certain um, certain things that just have certain movies or TV shows that have like just really cool looking designs and people just gravitate towards kind of like uh, Alice, Alice in Wonderland. Like that has a lot of fans in, in regards to like just selling merch. I just think it's because the characters kind of look cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so too. Oh. But I, I will say if you enjoyed night before Christmas, might as well check out corpse bride. And if you're at all into stop motion, it's one of those few movies that came out over the last 20 years that are actually stop motion. So uh, that's, it's kind of neat that they were able to at least do it in that style since it's so expensive to do time consuming and, and it really has to pay off, which I don't think Cobra Sprite did, but you know, it happened. It, it's still there. And I think Tim Burton's best movies are definitely behind him, uh, but I'm glad that we got what we did from him. And overall, a yeah. solid selection of additions to HBO Max. The biggest highlight for me, I think, is still the Harry Potter series, which I will start playing at the comic shop again, play a couple of those, and then it's time to clock out for me. So I'll be doing that. <laughs> um, did you have anything else you wanted to cover as we finish off this week's episode? Um, I just want to, if, uh, if you have HBO Max and you, uh, and you like comedies, I would suggest if you haven't watched Curb, put it on watch it curb your enthusiasm hilarious and also uh veep which coincidentally has uh jesus christ i can't say her name for <laughs> julia <laughs> Louis dreyfus yes yes julia so i would definitely say put that shit on veep is fucking hilarious <laughs> um and speaking of, we were speaking of netflix before master of none yes now with a new season Definitely. I haven't started it yet because I've been um, on Netflix. I've been binging uh, Peaky Blinders. Okay. Which is which is really good. So uh, that's going to be up next. I know me and you were big fans of uh, Master of None. So, Yeah, I'm, I'm glad they did another season because I know he got into some stuff like a year or two ago. And I didn't think they were going to do another one. But I'm glad to hear that. That's a surprise to me. That's news to me. I didn't I didn't know they were going to do another season. Yeah, I heard that, you know, it got renewed for that third season and it just never happened. Like after the second season came out, they Netflix gave him the third season, but it just never kept happening. And I don't know if it was COVID or what, 
and he's not even the main character. Like Aziz isn't huh. the main character of this new season. It's um uh his, the friend the uh, that uh, Lena Wraith plays. Uh, I can't remember what her character name was on the show. Denise. Ah, uh, Denise. Yeah. So it's it's uh, following her and her relationship with her girl. So gotcha. That okay. Sounds, sounds interesting, but I believe Aziz is uh, directing all the episodes. Mm-hmm. He wanted to get away from acting and go into directing. Okay. So it's not because of the controversy. They kept them on and, and all of that. It, it, it seems like it kind of blew over anyway, whatever that, that little bit was. Uh, yeah. I think Twitter he did a, a Netflix special. So it definitely wasn't because of that. Like they definitely, I want to say he has a, net, a, a new Netflix special within the last like two years. I don't think they really care about whatever, shit happened that he got yeah. canceled for okay awesome yeah I'll, I'll definitely watch the new season i'm excited for that awesome yeah i, I like master of none a lot it's really well well done did he direct the first couple seasons too i believe he did i want to say he directed uh, uh not every episode but he did direct a lot and he wrote i think all of them no, that's awesome yeah good good suggestions good stuff Maceo, I want to thank you again for helping out with this week's episode, and you're going to be on for E3, which is going to be awesome. Clearly, you've you've heard Maceo talk about video games just on this episode alone, so you know he's already uh, on it more than I am, especially these days. But I, I keep up with Scott and Maceo, Bobby, everyone else on the Discord as well when they're talking about games, Spoon especially, and that's how I kind of keep my finger on the pulse for gaming stuff and and it's gonna be i'm excited to do that e3 episode and see what new stuff they have announced and i know some people are a little apprehensive at this year's e3 because it's not like it's been in previous years especially with some of these companies holding their own streaming specials or directs but i think it'll still be a good year for gaming announcements yeah uh, it should be a good year uh hopefully there's going to be some announcements of shit actually coming out this year or at least next year because a lot of a lot of the games that got released or got shown last year at E3 got pushed back from their 2021 release date into 2022 like the Harry Potter game uh was supposed to come out this year and it got pushed into 2022 that that seems like a theme that's been going on a lot of things get pushed back um some of the things that the uh, games that were supposed to come out in the beginning of 2021, like Resident Evil, even got pushed back like a month or two. I'm definitely looking forward to what uh, Sony's got going on, what Ubisoft's got going on, Microsoft. There's rumblings of a new Nintendo Switch Pro. Mm-hmm. So everything's on the table. And I'm definitely can't wait to come back and talk to you about it and talk some shit with Bobby. Yeah, that'll be good. <laughs> uh, anywhere that the Brokehead Core can find you if they want to continue to talk. Twitter at Mac Murder, or you can catch me in the Discord streets with the reasons I'm broke. People's the Brokehead Core. There will be links to our Discord and to Maceo's Twitter in the description of today's episode. And, and that'll be... Uh, also at the reasons I'm broke.com. If you scroll to the bottom, you will find a discord link there. Huge. Thanks again to Maceo for coming on. We'll talk to him again in a couple of weeks along with Bobby. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us again this week. I've been Daniel and all will be well. Peace. The one bad thing, Maceo, about E3 this year, and I don't know, maybe we'll still get it, is since there's less conferences, especially with less audience involved in person at the at E3, we'll get less Ridge Racer moments, less cringy, uh, the, uh, the, yeah. the Nintendo Wii music thing that they did. All of those cringe compilations, Jamie Kennedy hosting and shit. Like, I don't think we're going to get a lot of that this year. No, nah, that, that, I... I want to say it's over for that shit. That, that <laughs> oh, doesn't man. really happen that much. That doesn't really happen that much. They, I, I want to say they're not as tone deaf as they were before. I mean, the la- I think the last banger was like when the Xbox One and the PS4 came out and Sony was like, oh, if you want to share a game, <laughs> you do this. And it was just like, boom, just deaded that shit all the way through. So like, I don't think that shit's going to happen anymore with 
super corny, especially since there's not um, any motion controls anymore. Uh, besides, uh, like the PlayStation VR stuff, there's no motion controls, so you're not gonna see people flinging their arms around or playing like fucking Connect. All that cringe <laughs> shit is done. Maybe Ubisoft because they still do shit <laughs> like have like Jamie Kennedy, Aisha Tyler go up there. They don't fuck around and get like fucking Jimmy Kimmel to host their show for no reason, <laughs> so they can sit sit there and be like, oh, you know, gamers Doritos, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's we, like, dude, we're just just do like Nintendo and just show us the fucking games. Yeah, they do like pre-recorded videos where there's no mistakes. It's not live. They don't have to worry about interacting with the audience. Th- that's how a lot of these companies are doing it. And uh, even Konami used. To, I don't even know if they have a presentation like they used to before, but they used to also be the kings of that shit. Yeah, the kings of uh, just they'd have like the actual game developers from Japan up on stage trying to do the presentation in English. And just having all of it be off because their comedic timing is different than it is in Japan. And they're trying to make people laugh and they're trying to get them excited and it just didn't work. Oh, it, oh man, it, I miss those days, Maceo. I got to be honest with you. I do miss those as bad yeah, as they were. Yeah. <laughs> it, the, the crazy part about it was that most of the time it wasn't fans in the stands. It was journalists. So you're trying to joke around <laughs> and kid around. Like it wasn't up until like the past like five years where it would be regular ass gamers, like people that could get tickets because like Microsoft or Sony, they would just be like, Hey, here's a ticket to like Xbox fans. Here's a ticket to, to a Sony fan. Like you, you, you could win a ticket if you go here or go to this store or you uh, sign up for this thing. And then you could get into just that conference. So the people screaming and cheering would be actual fans. Mm -hmm. But after, but all the other places like Ubisoft, they didn't have that opportunity. EA doesn't have, they don't have that opportunity. So the, like they're over there trying to hype up the crowd. It's like, it's journalists trying to just do their job. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they do all that corny, cringy stuff. And like the people at home, they're not, they're not clapping. With, <laughs> they're at home. <laughs> journalists like are just taking the, notes and tweeting and shit. <laughs> yeah. It's like clapping at the end of a movie. Like, dude, the fucking actors ain't in here, man. Like, right. <laughs> walk out the fucking theater. 